guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Stacey and today I'm going to be doing a video called Homeschooling with Littles. This video is in collaboration with a bunch of other mamas and the lady hosting it is Jamie from Simply Living It. I will link the playlist down below and also a link to Jamie's channel down below. I'm really looking forward to watching the other videos in the playlist. So as we all know, homeschooling with littles can definitely be challenging. Um, just so you guys know, I have six-year-old twins who are in kindergarten this year. We're almost done with our school year, yay. And then I have a two-year-old and a six-month-old. He was born and the, and the six-month-old was born during the school year this past year. So my boys are playing right over here, if you hear them. Um, they're happy, they're just playing contentedly, making noise. <laughs> So in this video, I'm going to give you guys a couple tips about homeschooling with littles and at the end of this, I'll put in a clip of in real life of like us homeschooling and like the two-year-old doing school with us and just different things that he does. Okay, so I want to start with when, a, when you're pregnant and having a baby during the school year. So if you're planning, if you know you're going to be having a baby during the school year, um, my recommendation would be to plan to take some time off over that time just to allow yourself to adjust to the baby and allow the kids to adjust to the new child. Um, and I think it's just it's a really healthy thing to do. So if you plan ahead, you can start your school year early or go a little bit late, but definitely plan to take a t some time off, one to two months maybe, over the birth of the baby. And then my number one tip is to take advantage of nap time. So my infant, he definitely um, is taking a lot of naps. Recently, he's gone kind of down in his amount of time that he sleeps. He's six months old now. So that morning nap, um, when he takes that morning nap, we you can get a lot of schoolwork done. Um, so I'm really thankful for that. And then my two-year-old is still up during that time, but it's okay. He's in here with us. And so then that could, brings me into my number two tip is to give the two-year-old or the toddler attention first. So if you watch any of my day in the life videos of homeschooling, we often will sit at a brown mat over here on the floor with pillows. We often sit on there and read books first. And so usually my first book or two will be geared towards him and books that he's interested in. He usually comes and sits in my lap and usually the older kids, the kindergartners listen in too. You know, they love picture books. All my kids love, love picture books. Um, but the first couple books especially are geared at his age level and he'll ask to read them repeatedly. And so I kind of, I will read them twice to him, but then after that he has to wait till school is done for me to read them again. <laughs> um, but yes, he definitely loves book and he loves, it's really educational for him. Like I'll ask him what the colors are or, um, the shapes or how many of an object or just th different things like that. He loves discussing it and being involved and he loves asking questions. And then we sing songs and he really enjoys getting involved with that and singing songs and we often pray. I have a jar, I have a jar of prayer sticks and so he can like help pull a prayer stick out and like, oh, you know, you got church, so we're gonna pray for church um, today. And he just feels involved that way. So um, I guess that kind of goes to, into my number three tip is involve them. So number two tip is like do something with them first, like set aside 10, 15 minutes where you're focusing on them, whether that's reading a book or something else. And then number three tip is involve them, like have activities they can be participate with, such as singing songs, you know, praying. And then kind of that goes along with that is I have different activities. Like back here, I have a milk jug, the lid is cut off and it's full of cotton balls and it's full of cotton balls and he loves to dump these all out. And then I have a mini cupcake pan that we keep in here in the school room because he enjoys it so much. And I have a clip of this at the end where we wrote numbers on little white cupcake wrappers, like one, two, three. And then he has to put like one pom pom in the cupcake holder, pan, cupcake thing, whatever you call it. Uh, like one in that one, two in the next one, three in the next one, and so on. When he, we have it up to 10. Now he gets confused on like eight, nine, and 10. They're big enough for him yet. But sometimes I will have just one, if I'm working with one of the boys and I'll have the other boy go and help him. And so that's tip number four is um, involve an older child. Like if one kid is reading to me, practicing reading, and because they're in kindergarten, no, it takes them like five minutes to sound out one word, not quite, but it takes them a long time to sound out one word. And so if one kindergartner is reading to me, then I'll have the other kindergartner like, hey, go over and help Cree count to eight with the cotton balls or whatever. So involve the other kids, have them take turns rotating with the toddler. Even if it's just for five minutes so they go and get him involved in a new activity, that's really, really helpful. Okay, and then um, tip number five, I think I'm at five, um, is, baby wearing. So I have a baby carrier and I use it almost every single day. Um, when the baby does wake up from his nap and we're still doing school, I will just wear him. If he's teething, if he's grumpy, not feeling good that day, he just wants attention, wants to be close to me, wearing him is a really, really good option. And we live in Cambodia here and it's really hot, so it gets really hot using that. Um, so sometimes I will just have him sit on my lap and then when I can, I'll set him down for five minutes and then pick him up again. But he definitely likes the baby carrier. 
carrier. He'll fall asleep in there and everything. Um, it's definitely easier. It keeps me hands free that way. I can walk around or whatever. All right, and then tip number six is utilize electronics. And I'm not a fan of sitting my kid in front of the electronic device for like six hours or four hours or whatever. Like I don't like using it in that way, but I don't mind using it in short spurts. And it actually can be really educational. Um, now you can download a lot of apps that are really educational for toddlers. And there's even like YouTube videos that are free that are really educational. Um, with the apps, like it's really good for them to get like that hand eye motion where they have to like slide things and move things, turn them. Um, my two year old, he likes to do like puzzles and he likes to do matching colors and he has to sort different objects and counting and he hasn't really gotten to ABCs yet, but um, I could start introduce introducing him to that soon. And then also on YouTube, he really likes to watch like educational videos and like rhyming and songs and stuff like that. It's really good for him, I think also in really short verse. So I like to use this option, option number six, utilizing electronics as my very last last option. I like to try the other things first and then um, have this more towards the end. Like, when it's getting really bad, we're just trying to get done. <laughs> and then also I like to say that if you're having a day where it just isn't going good and like you have a fussy toddler or a fussy baby and you don't know why, maybe later you figure out they're sick or something, it's okay to skip school for that day. I think it's really important for us as moms to know that we are moms first and um, be a mom first. Take care of that sick baby, take care of that sick child and um, be a mom first I think is really important. Alright and at the end of this I'm going to insert some clips of some things that my toddler does while we're doing school. So one thing he really likes to do is right up here I have different markers and crayons and stuff setting. Like these here, these are dot markers and my two year old loves to play with those but what he recently has been into is just taking all the lids off and stacking them and then putting all the lids back on again. He just thinks that's so much fun. And then same with the glue sticks, he loves taking the lids off and putting all the lids on his little fingers and then putting them back on again. And that's really good hand eye coordination for him plus it gives him something to do. Honestly this guy is having a lot of fun taking lids on and off. Of every of the dot markers and the glue things. Hey, whatever it takes to keep him busy while we're doing school. And I will also insert a clip of my two-year-old playing with this thing back here. Creed loves to play with this thing here. He takes so originally originally it was not broken. It was like glued together like that. But he likes to it got broken and now he likes to take all those off and then put them back on again but usually they end up all over our school room, but that's okay. So I really like to use like fun, cheaper, free things for my toddler and babies to keep them busy. So um, the things I'm gonna be showing you guys are in that category. We're working on school here, and the two-year-old, Creed, he's just playing with some craft popsicle sticks. He's stacking them. Um, he was doing these pom-poms. We wrote like a number on the bottom, and then he has to put that many pom-poms in each one, so. He enjoys doing that. He also did this, he also did this ABC puzzle and he also put these dinosaurs in this mini cupcake thing. He took them apart and just stuck one in each one. That took him a while. And after a bit he'll come back and probably stick the stick them back together again. So he just does all kinds of things in here while we do school. Another day of homeschool. The boys are here doing their school. And Creed is drawing with markers on paper. You like to do that, don't you, bud? Yeah. Mm hmm What are you drawing? Diamond. Diamond. Wow, that's so cool. Good job. Like a house. Like a house. Oh, good job. He is so hot, he's sweating. Like Zadok's house. Like Zadok's house. <laughs> like house. All right. And Kaden is just sitting here on the mat playing toys with us while we're doing school. Zadok's doing a logic challenge. He wants to be involved and do everything we're doing too. <laughs> it's a good corner for him here. So this is Creed, what he's getting into now while we're doing school. He likes to play with these dot markers and these glue things. Okay, so here's another project. I didn't video when all the boys were in here. I had all four of them in here um, painting and even even the baby was in here with us. But um, we had a lot of fun. I painted with them. We have a big mess now. The other boys are long gone, but the two-year-old is still loving painting. He painted all these pictures right here. Um, but the boys did, Zadok painted this one here. And he even put like glitter on the fish there. So although this is a house full of boys, we still use some glitter. <laughs> I think we have like two containers of glitter in the whole house. 
But yeah, this is one way to get the preschooler and the baby involved with us. And we like to sometimes do art projects on Sunday afternoons. Sometimes it can be too much to do an art project like tacked on the end of a school day. Everybody's just done and mommy's patience is wore out. So it works better, especially right now during quarantine, to do a big project mess like this on a Sunday afternoon when we have nothing else much going. And another thing that is really good for homeschooling toddlers is snacks. Lots and lots of snacks. They can really help a toddler to change a tone of attitude. <laughs> and bigger boys too. And mommy too, really. <laughs> So one other thing I did not get a clip of that my two-year-old loves to do is on my, my bookshelf I have like wooden puzzles and a couple manipulatives and books that are aimed at his age group and so I really find it helpful to rotate those. So um, if every like maybe once a week I swap them out for a new activity, um, a different puzzle, a different book, and a different manipulative to play with, that really really helps keep him interested. Um, He'll be really content maybe for like a whole 15 minutes playing with like one new to him thing. And then I'll swap it out again for a couple weeks and yeah, have a rotating system like that. I find it really helpful. And then also if I present to him maybe a toy that he already knows, we have like in our tip toy bin, if I present it to him in a new way. For example, if I get a piece of paper and draw roads on it and give him some Hot Wheel cars and like say this is a house and a store and a gas station or something, and then he can play with that in a new way and it's so like new and exciting to him and it didn't cost me anything. So yeah, just something that is like new and different will spark his interest, spark his creativity, and he loves it. So I'd like to add one thing. This next school year, my two-year-old will then be three, and this summer we're gonna be going to the States for like our furlough, and it's my one chance to pick up stuff for the next whole year. Um, actually, probably for the next year and a half. Anyway, so if you guys have any suggestions of, of things to pick up while we're back there to help keep him busy during the next school year um, that I can add to our rotation, please let me know in the comments down below. I would really appreciate it. Preferably things that are um, not too expensive. And like Pinterest is full of really, really great ideas and I love Pinterest, but some of them take a lot of time for me to like set up and get ready. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I'm looking forward to watching the other videos in the playlist and um, I hope you find this, this video helpful and give you guys some new ideas and incentives, especially if you're like me and not trying to spend a lot of money. And so, yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and we'll see you guys again later. Bye. Get back on again. And that's really good hand eye work. And that's really good hand eye work. And that's really good hand eye coordination for him.